What's up, everybody? <laughs> oh, look at all the pretty nerds. Hey, nerds! <laughs> you enjoy Nerd HQ? Yeah! Good. We aim to please. Uh, so we, we're going to have about 50 minutes to ask questions of a very, very special person in all of our lives. <laughs> she literally came to San Diego to do nothing else but Nerd HQ. She didn't have any other press. Oh, she's right. <laughs> and Bonstrahovsky, everybody. I was just telling them that they that you literally only came for HQ. That's why they cheered so high. Oh. And then you, she's like, oh, that must be my cue. Okay. <laughs> it's a premature entrance. No, it's a perfect, perfect entrance. Hi, everyone. <laughs> You're so far away. Why are you going to sit over there? That's weird. All right. All right. <laughs> there we go. I'm getting my drink. Oh, I lost mine. We can get it back. I had a beverage. <laughs> hey, if anybody can hear us in there, bring that beverage out, would you? Oh, look at us together again. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are crazy. Uh, look at right. with Ask your fun. questions, guys. You know, you know the routine. What do you want to know? Yes, right over here. Right over there. Hi. Um, so I just want to start out by saying thank you both so much for taking your time and doing this for all of the fans and for Operation Smile. I really appreciate that. Our pleasure. Um, Thanks so, for buying a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Yvonne, I just wanted to say um, I started watching 24 because of you and because of Chuck. Um, um, if you could be any superhero, like, in a movie, regardless of gender, since I know that you like doing your own stunts and you've said that before, um, what superhero would it be and why? I'm Maybe the new Thor. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I yeah. mean, the regardless of gender thing has gone out the window now, so. That's oh, true. No. I was, I'm a bit lame when it comes to answering those questions because I was never a superhero person growing up. I didn't really get into the whole Batman, Superman thing. I got into the Uma Thurman thing on Kill Bill. That was... Which is kind of why I enjoyed Sarah Walker so much, because it was kind of a lot of that gimmicky kind of fight scene stuff. So that was fun, you know. You don't want to know what I'd like to be? That's fine. <laughs> uh, next question. Yeah, who's got it? We're getting oh, 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 today. oh. I'm so, I forgot to, I always forget to do this. Thank you. Is there any flash photography allowed at this panel? No. Is there any video allowed at this panel? No. Are you guys awesome? Yeah. Yes. And by the way, you and you raised $6,000 for charity today. So well done. Pat yourself on the back. Uh, thanks for the reminder. Uh, who's got, yes, you, sir, with the excellent uh, Nerd Machine Gears of War mashup shirt that we sold a few years ago. Love you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so huge Chuck fan, obviously. Uh, Mass Effect, my favorite franchise of any game ever. Okay. Dexter, love it. Uh, and Jack Bauer is like our generation's Chuck Norris. 
How do you pick your roles? Because I'm starting to wonder if you're just following me on Twitter. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm fine with. How did you know? Uh, I am following you on Twitter. Um, yes! No, I, I just... Uh, well, Chuck was the first thing I did when I was fresh off the boat uh, as an Australian here in the US of A. Uh, so that was just something that sort of landed in my lap. And then from that point forward, I've been uh, lucky enough to have had some really great things come my way, like Dexter uh, and, and 24. I mean, I like to change it up a little bit here and there, not be a spy every thing I do. That's only happened twice. Uh, and, <laughs> but you know, but it's been good. It's been good playing a serial killer and then, you know, scientist here and there and doing Broadway, Broadway, Broadway. We both did Broadway last year. We both did Broadway. Excited. Yes. I'm just following her around. I'm going to be a serial killer next, uh, then a scientist. Uh, is there a particular role that you got your eye on that you would like to, or type of role that you'd like to play? Now that you've brought up Thor, I mean, uh, we sh I'll just aim high and, and go for that. <laughs> I mean, they're going to reboot that franchise at some point, you know? Yeah. And you've got, you got the her, and you got the style. I got the you know her. I, mean? I just got my bangs. You know what I mean? Yeah, she look good, don't see? Don't see? You look good. I didn't know how to style them today. I was, because I, I, don't, I'm, I don't know how to do hair at all, and today... I, I had to do my own hair, and I had to straighten it, which I've never done, and use a round brush thing that I had to go buy at the CVS, <laughs> because I don't own one, and this happened, so it's pretty good. I think you did a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good. good job, don't you think? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I feel like girls. I feel like girls talk about their hair, and all guys here is the teacher from Peanuts, because we don't know, understand anything. <laughs> I don't understand. It's like, yeah, it looks good to me. I don't know. Don't you do that, don't you? you I throw a little, I throw a little some effort. Throw a little zhuzh in there. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that was. <laughs> uh, who's got uh, next question? And uh, right there, yes. Hi. Hi. Okay, hi. So um, thank you for all of this. I, I'm nervous. Sorry. <laughs> we don't bite. <laughs> Much. Um, so on. Oh, there you go. I'm a beverage. Thank you. <laughs> Your water. Cheers. It's my water. Spritz of lime. Oh, okay. Um, so you're the reason that I started playing Mass Effect. And we, because when I saw Miranda, I saw her online and I figured out it was you just by looking at her. And then I figured out you used your Australian accent for her because I'd only heard your American accent from Chuck. Um, so I started playing Mass Effect and I got really excited when I started playing Mass Effect 2 to see Miranda. So my question is, um, what are your thoughts on Miranda? Like, even if you haven't played the games, what do you think of her character? I haven't played the game. Uh, <laughs> I should really play the game. It's lame. Uh, I'm really lame today, aren't I? I can't answer anyone's questions. Uh, but that's why I've been, I, I feel like an adopted uh, nerd person because I, I wasn't <laughs> really like a game, a gamey, superhero-y type person. So I feel like since Chuck, Started, I've been adopted into this whole thing. But to answer your question, um, what was the question again? <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, <laughs> I've only had one beverage. How about playing oh, the about Miranda. About Miranda. Oh, I mean, well, that's fun. That was, I think that was one of the first um, voiceover gigs that I did. Uh, it's really fun. I mean, it's, uh, it's, I don't know if any of you know what it's like doing a voice for something like that, but you don't usually see any of the visuals at all. You just, it's you and a sound booth and a microphone. So you're really creating the character from the voice first. And then they, as I understand, add the images to it later, because I've done a few since. I think that, in your experience, has it been Yeah, I think I, they typically have some kind of rough ideas uh, already right. that they're sketching out, but it's, it's not the fine details. And then, yeah, you do the voice, and then they'll kind of uh, marry that to what you've done. Right. That's right. So, yeah. You really do feel like a part of the creation, the birth of the, the character. So, yeah. Miranda's pretty sassy, as far as I know, from that YouTube sex scene that I've seen. <laughs> it's not really a sex scene kiss scene erotic kissing scene a love scene love i wouldn't say love scene no <laughs> no is that raunchy huh it's lusty oh a lust scene oh <laughs> good day i'll be looking that up later uh that was me pretending to write on my hand 
Uh, yes, we have somebody over here, right there. Yes. Hello. Hi. Thanks for spending so much money at my panel earlier. Uh, See, I auctioned off some shoes and she bought them. Aw, oh, that's yeah. lovely. And for anybody else who spent money, everyone who's just spending money here this weekend, thank you so much. I love you very much. <laughs> Specifically for Operation Smile, you guys are rock stars. Yes, yes, go ahead. Actually, I'm a maternity nurse, so oh. I do see kids with cleft lip and palate, so, oh. <clears throat> so I do know firsthand. Yeah. Anyway, we love you and everything that you have done. We loved you in Dexter, of course in 24, and we're hoping you'll all come back and that maybe you and Chloe can uh, <laughs> rescue Jack. From the Russians? <laughs> From the Russians, yes, absolutely. Yeah. How was it working on the set of Dexter? Dexter was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed working with Michael and Jennifer in particular. I mean, everyone was great. I, I just had the most to do with Michael. And, and uh, he was a real collaborator and really wanted to make each scene the best possible scene that he could and sort of really took the time. Where's that music coming from? <laughs> I, I, I ordered that. that oh. was, uh, it's one of those horns like from the World Cup a few years ago. Anyway, continue. Well, no, it, it was wonderful, really wonderful. And I was thrilled uh, with the storylines that they gave me. I felt like I could really sink my teeth into something that was different to, to anything I'd ever done and a lot of little challenges along the way of, of things I'd, I'd never done acting-wise. It was very different, and we loved you in it. I wonder if you would be willing to sign a Chuck poster that we bought in the prior panel for a $40 donation to Operation Smile. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Why don't you just hand that to a volunteer? Thank we'll you. get a Sharpie and we'll work that out. Thank you so much. Uh, who's next? Who's got a microphone? Right over here. Oh, right over here. Right over here. Hi. Uh, Hi. Love you and Dexter. Um, I just wanted to know what made you get into acting and then when did you come over from Australia to the U.S.? Uh, acting, I was... I was like the goofy kid with braces and bad skin and I was really lanky when I was little and I was always goofing around in front of a home video camera. And we have a lot of very incriminating footage at home of things that I should never share with the world. Uh, but it, w it was just something that I was always doing and I was always dragging my friends from school over, uh, you know, to do ma do made up skits and we would make fun of commercials and all kinds of things and do made up uh, you know music videos and stuff like that so and I think I had my first acting lesson when I was 12 and so f I think from that point forth I was always involved in some kind of drama production thing through school and high school and and then uh, I went straight into a three-year drama degree in Sydney and then I I started my I guess professional career in Sydney for three years doing commercials and things before I came to the States in my fourth year professionally, which was the first year of Chuck, which started everything, which is now well, almost eight years ago. Isn't that crazy? I know. That's so crazy. So weird. I feel old. Yeah. I am old. You're married now. I'm married now. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's pretty awesome. Uh, who else? What else we got? Oh, right over here. Uh, somebody over there that a volunteer is pointing at that clearly does not want to stand up. Right here, right here. Where? Oh, I'll tell. Uh, yes, you. Excellent shirt. Hi. <laughs> I know, right? So, love the show. Been a fan from the beginning. I was curious if there's a chance of getting you both in the photo booth for like $50 donation to Operation Smile? Uh, oh, Together. Wow, yeah. no pressure. No pressure. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, we'll have to talk about that because I literally, I'm, we, we have, I have panels all day long and I don't know what her schedule is like. Uh, but if we can make it, I'll tweet it out. We'll put, put it to the Nerd Machine, Nerd HQ app. Has everybody downloaded that thing? <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll, let you, we'll let you know, yeah. but. Thank you, thank you for thinking outside the box and wanting to raise more money. For, he just doesn't want to stand next to me take a photo with me. Yep. <laughs> I stink. <laughs> You're not too bad from right here. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Zach. Oh. Yeah. Oh yes. Hi, Hi. Tej. Hi. We've gotten a lot of requests, like a lot, that people seem to want to see Yvonne dance. Oh no. You don't have to say that. It's trending. What? Gotta do it, sorry. No, you don't. <laughs> do it. Well, but do what? I'll do the running man, how's that? Do it. But am I, do I have music? I mean, 
Who's got an iPhone or something? Like, We're high I'm, tech here. We can get yeah, you some music. Yeah. Am I really? Have to do some dancing? I'm never going to live this down. Do it. Can so we get her some music? Can we do that? Why don't we do this? Why does she, why does she uh, running man her way off the stage at the end of the panel? We can How's do that. Sound? Let's do that. Let's or, keep answering questions. Oh, for heaven's sake, we're not monkeys. <laughs> Jeez. You can kill the music now. You can kill the music. We're going to keep answering questions. Thank you. Thanks, Tej. I thought that was coming from the other oval. Oh, that might be coming from another room. Hey, you can kill that music. Hi, <laughs> ah, yes, you were here. Hi. Um, I loved you on 24. I was a 24 fan from the very beginning, so I was glad to see you on there. I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about working with Kiefer. Are there either any funny stories or like some stunts that went wrong or just some interesting facts about working with him? Because he seems like a very intense guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's good at being Jack Bauer, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> he's very intense, uh, but in a really good way. He really brings it uh, to... to you know, the, the workspace. And one thing that I really liked about Kiefer uh, is that not only does he bring a lot as an actor to the, to the show, but he's also a producer and I feel like he's a very active one. So he's very involved on the day, you know, perfecting everything. He's very much a perfectionist. Um, we had a great working relationship. Uh, there was a, a time when we were doing a scene and I was, uh, we were both shooting guns next to each other and we did a take and then he said, oh, you know, would you mind um, just aiming your gun a little to the left because your, your shell casings are hitting me in the face. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, you know, if, if it had been the other way around, I, I would have been like, cut, cut, what, um, what, you know. So he's, he, yeah, he was tough and uh, he liked the hot metal hitting him in the face and just <laughs> did that for the first take and he was cool, so, yeah. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, right over there. Hey, Yvonne. Hi. Um, I'm glad you got your beverage. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so this question is um, a hard question, but basically, yeah, sorry. Um, basically, like if you could pick anybody to be on a conversation panel, that you would want to be in as well? Anybody like dead or alive? So basically like if you were King Arthur, who would you want to be on your round table? Or you could ignore the second weird part of that question. <laughs> and, and was there a second weird part or was the whole and, thing kind of, okay. And you could just like answer the first part of the question. Yeah. It would be a dream uh, co-panelist yeah. with you. There you go. Obviously, that, there's you. me, but beyond me. Well, when I was growing up, I always had a crush on Tom Hanks. So I would love, and I met him once, once. It was very exciting for me uh, when he was doing his Broadway play. So that was exciting. Uh, but I would love, because I grew up watching... Turner and Hooch and the Burbs and all that stuff. So I would love to have a chat with Tom Hanks and, you know, talk about the good old films. Good answer. Mm. Yeah. Who's, who's next? Thanks, Zach. <laughs> yeah, you, you're welcome. I agree. Yes, you, sir. Um, uh, 24 is my second favorite show ever. Mass Effect is my first favorite video game ever. And... He, al he already asked my Mass Effect question, and she already asked my 24 question. So I'm just going to say, you, could, you would be an awesome Captain Marvel, a superhero. Thank you. <laughs> I like the nods of approval. In the yes, yeah. yes I, I agree with that. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Do you know anything about Captain Marvel? I know a little bit. A little bit? But don't ask me any more questions. I feel like I've actually seen... <laughs> about that. <laughs> Moving oh, on. I, have to do my I feel like I. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I feel like I've seen. Are there like memes or, or uh, images of her as Captain Marvel online? I feel like I've there seen are, those. There are. Yes. No, that I've been searching. Um, <laughs> Come on now. Anyway. Uh, yes. Who's next? Who's got the? Who's got the conch? Oh, that's me. Right here. You've got the conch. First, I want to say thank you for being here. I've been wanting to see you since the last time you were at Nerd HQ, and. I didn't miss, I missed your panel because I was on the second Chuck panel, 
and you guys did a little dance together, and I would like to see it live, if that's possible. A little it was arm more dance. like a, we were just like doing we this. We could throw in a little. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so apparently we are monkeys. Uh, <laughs> it's come to that. Uh, who's next? Uh, burning up people. Yes, you, sir. All right, I just want to make sure we're working. Um, but, uh, hey, so I didn't, I forgot that you were in Dexter, but I'm, I, uh, it was towards, it's towards the end, so, you know, I'm, I started watching from the beginning, and I, uh, but anyway, uh, That's so not I excuse, wanted you but to continue. tell me a story from Dexter, which about your favorite blooper, because you, you look like a good actor and everything, but uh, I know it comes after, <laughs> you know, you know. So, so, no, no, relax. Uh, but yeah, I want to hear your favorite blooper, please. Oh, oh I, I, have to, I have to rack my brain on that. Um, favorite blooper, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I, I, can't, uh, I thought you were checking your phone for a second. You looked, sorry. Oh, I was just thinking about, I know you're a good actor, but <laughs> anytime, anytime there's a but in that compliment, it's very... Never good. I understand. Um, well, I do remember uh, the last scene with Michael that I had to shoot, that we both had to shoot as our last scene together. We kind of, we, we were very giggly and nervous because it was the last scene ever and we kept messing it up. Um, and we, there was a lot of giggling throughout the lovemaking scenes because that's always awkward. Um, and there's 40 people looking at you faking a love scene, so... That, there, you know, there was a lot of bloopers, I imagine, from that. Um, unsavory type bloopers. Uh, visually, you know, I'm sure. That's about it. That's all I can say about that. Mm -hmm. uh, who's next? Right there. Hi. Um, Hi. I am a San Diego native, so I was just wondering if you have any favorite spots to go to whenever you visit the place, you know, this city. Um, and also, I was in that panel this morning with Zach. And I was wondering if I can donate as well and get a picture sign as do that too, like them. Sure. If uh, we were do allowed so, to do this. Yeah, you could you, you put his hand to a volunteer yeah. and they'll they'll bring it down and we can get that sign Thank and get you. back to you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, my well, I only really come to San Diego for Comic Con. So I, I, I don't think I've ever actually been here other than Comic Con. I've been here every year. You just think the city is populated with nerds. That's that, just what you yeah. you just assume In there's weird like seventeen costumes. Harry Potters at all time. <laughs> Yeah. In downtown. Yeah, I like Harry Potter, <laughs> by the way. Um, <laughs> random fact. Um, what was the question? San Diego, that's right. Well, my favorite, my fa and this is honestly not just because I'm here and because Zach's sitting next to me, but honestly my favorite thing to do in San Diego is the dance party at the Node HQ, which happens every year, and this is my favorite thing, and I'm, I'm here just for Node HQ this year, so I've uh, been looking forward to the dance party. I Did love anybody it. come to the dance party last night? Yes, we had fun. Yeah, imagine. I saw a photo online. The Thanks crowd. for being there. Yeah. We really appreciated that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got up at 5 a.m. today. Come on now. All right. And you look fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. By the way, speaking of Harry Potter, I can't believe that Daniel Radcliffe is coming to SDCC for the first time. After all of those years of Harry Potter, he never came. But then I was thinking about it, and I was like, it's actually kind of smart, I guess, because it's not, I don't know, well, not smart, but like, that movie was, all those movies are going to do huge business anyway, and now he's helping a much smaller film, I guess, kind of, you know, get its legs, so, uh, but it was fascinating. I was like, what, really? Never? Never as Harry Potter did he ever come. But did the other people come? The other I don't know. Did anybody go to Harry Potter uh, panels at SDCC? What's that? There's a Harry Potter panel. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. There's a Harry Potter panel. <laughs> Is there? All right. Oh, oh, his pa Daniel Radcliffe's panel is going on right now. Well, God bless you, Daniel. I hope you have Not a, a Harry panel. Potter panel. Oh. Not a Harry Potter panel. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Who is next? Uh, yes, you. Yes. <clears throat> Hi. Hi, from Australia, by the way. Oh, yeah. g'day. Hi. G'day, man. Um, it's kind of an Australian question. Um, have you been keeping up with, like, things that are starting to become successful in the States, like Jermaine and Jonah and... Summer Heights High and stuff. Yeah. She, she brought that to us at Chuck. We, I did. Yeah. That's right. 
Puck you, miss. Yeah, puck you, miss. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I told her, yeah, we got Adam onto it. Adam Baldwin was obsessed after <laughs> we... Oh, no, actually, he discovered it on his own. I think he did. I can't take credit for that. Uh, I wish I could. But no, yeah, yeah. No, I, I love all of that. Uh, Summer Heights High, We Could Be Heroes. Uh, we Could Be Heroes is the one that is before Summer Heights High. I don't know if it has, has that aired here yet? I don't think so. I think they, they've only done Summer Heights High, but you should all go out and watch the one that comes before it, where Jemay was created, because he plays six different characters in the original one, We Can Be Heroes. And there's some really funny ones in there. So, yeah, he, he's got Angry Boys coming out now. And, oh, yeah, I love all that stuff. He did a tour of all the private schools along the North Shore. Oh, really? He stood outside uh, our old school and I think possibly your old school. Oh, really? And, yeah, it didn't go down particularly well. Oh, no, why not? He got in big trouble. <laughs> oh. He portrayed uh, private school girls not very nice. Oh, right, well, yeah, no. Fair enough. Uh, who's next? Right over here. Hi. Um, I'm a huge fan of Chuck and 24. And given how easily it is to get killed off on 24, I was just curious, when you signed up, did you know you were going to make it all the way through? Or was that on a script-by-script -script basis? Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's it, to be fair. <laughs> I, love that there's, I love that there's an argument going on within the audience. <laughs> uh, look, technically, um, technically... <laughs> sorry, why did I have to throw glasses on? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know if so I'm supposed you know? to answer that. I mean, do you want to block your ears? Does I mean, answer? What? answer it. Uh, I knew... You know, I didn't ever actually ask whether I was going to die or not. I just assumed I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't or would? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, but I should have asked. <laughs> I guess, well, you know, they can kill you off if they don't like you. You know, anything can happen. I guess they liked me, um, which is a plus. Uh, but no, I didn't ever officially ask. I just assumed. That's my honest answer. Who's next? Hi. Oh, right over here. Can I just say that you do look very cute, so whatever you did with the little whirly brush thing, it worked. Thank you. It's really just molding I know. Oh. Like, I'm blown away. Cheers. Anyway, you post a lot of pictures of Chazzy and Wilbur on, like, Instagram and Twitter. I wanted to know if you had any, like, funny stories about them or what they've been up to lately. Uh, well... I was very sad. Uh, Chazzy in particular has separation anxiety because he uh, he was dumped three times before I rescued him, and so he had he had I mean he was at the pound and then rescued and then gave him someone gave him back again, and so he was I, I'm his fourth owner that he's bonded with properly, and he constantly thinks that I'm gonna leave him, especially if we're in my car. If anyone else's car, it's fine, but in my car, he kind of hyperventilate well he used to a lot more he used to hyperventilate in the car but now he's, he's better but since I got back from London because I spent almost six months in London shooting 24 and I didn't have Chazzy with me he is now glued to me and he doesn't care about anyone else who he you know is bonded with or whatever he doesn't care he just every time I leave even for an hour he's sitting on the doormat by the front door breaks my little heart my little Chazzy I should have brought him. I should bring Chaz next year. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we can accommodate dogs. Uh, dog HQ. His pet copart. Why did you bring him to London? I guess, uh, you gotta laugh because it was funny and it's correct, and I'm asleep at the wheel, apparently. <laughs> That's what's happening. Why did you bring him to London? You know, it happened so fast, the, right. the whole London thing. And I was, I was in New York promoting I Frankenstein one week before I had to go straight to London from New York, and it just all happened oh, the, yeah. at the last minute. And 
you do, it's possible, and I know Kim Raver did it with her dogs, but you have to fill out all this paperwork and then you risk them being quarantined anyway at the airport and I would, if he, you know, yeah. it was just, it would, it, I would just, yeah, nightmare if, if he got quarantined, yeah. Uh, yes, right over here, right over there. Uh, I just want to say, it's been said, but uh, thanks for putting on this whole thing, and thanks for you guys being here. It's really awesome with Operation Smile and everything. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks uh, you all for coming. And uh, my question is, uh, you just mentioned playing a CIA agent, agent again. Um, and, you know, so first, obviously, for Chuck fans, Sarah Walker comes to mind, but she did a good job of, of making it feel completely different. So, like, as an actor, what's your process? Are you one of the uh, actor who, like, adds a lot of backstory to your characters, or do you just kind of take it from what you get on the page and then try to make that real for you from there on? Um, with something like Chuck, that was, an, a, we were the original cast with the you know original pilot. And so that uh, is very, it's a different process because you only have what's on the page and you do have to do a lot of creating of the backstory and, and all kinds of things. With, with an existing show, like when I jumped onto Dexter and, and 24, for me, watching the show is really important because the tone of the show really informs a lot of the the acting style really which then in turn informs you know certain character choices that you make like 24 i love that it was it's really raw and it's sort of you know it's you know how the camera's always moving and you, you very much sort of feel like a fly on the wall it's not so stylized chuck was very stylized and sort of much more um formulated in a way in, in, in its uh, filming style. So with, with 24 being so raw, I, I liked that it influenced me to make certain choices that, that kept it very, very real. You know, um, I know the circumstances are very extraordinary on the show, but, you know, we try to keep it as real as possible and there's not a whole lot of stylized sort of acting or anything going on in that show. Yeah. Uh, right, right here. We'll go with this gentleman. Nice shirt. Uh, hi, Yvonne. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Dennis, and uh, I want to say you're the reason that I started coming to Comic Con. Uh, love you so much. <laughs> let's let's give them a minute, guys. Let's give them. A minute. So my question is, since you've been doing so many projects lately, like, when you come to a new set, what's, like, your kind of, like, icebreakers when you do with everybody, like, just to break the ice when you meet somebody new, new uh, castmates? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of like the first day of school every time you start a new job. Uh, it really is. I mean, as actors, you, you, you're constantly doing job interviews, basically, and then you, you're constantly changing your job. So... You, I mean, and everyone's different, so you never really know what anyone's gonna be like. Uh, some people are shyer than others, and some people are more outgoing, so I, I don't know, it's just you, it, it, every day is a learning experience for me. You know, you have to just try and navigate the set as best you can with your instinct and uh, with respect to everybody, and you know, it, it's, it can be difficult because everybody's, uh, working methods are different as well. You know, a lot of, you know, some people are very collaborative. Some people prefer to be just sort of on their own with things. And, you know, it, it can be uh, difficult putting the, the, the puzzle together, so to speak. But, I mean, usually, I mean, it's great. And I love what I do. And I'm very lucky to be doing what I'm doing. So, yeah. What, was, was it hard working with such a shy actor that... <laughs> Like when we started, away, like to keep me out of my shell, was that difficult? You were a hard nut to crack. Uh, yeah, very shy, you know, not very outgoing at all. I know. I'm working on that. No musical skills whatsoever. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's next? Right here. Hi. I have a question for both of you, but first off, Zach, I know that you're very open with your faith, and you say God bless, and I can tell that you mean it, and it shows through your work. But for... Um, for both of you, how does incorporating your faith and just your general beliefs apply to acting and different roles that you get? Do you ever feel like you have to say no to certain things or that, like, looking back, you feel like it's 
it reflects upon you as a person, like your character and things that your character's done? I always feel like with acting, uh, you know, it, it's a form of art. We as actors represent life and humanity and people, and there's so many different people in in the world. There are bad people and good people, to be very general, and there's a lot of in between. And as actors, we are given the challenge to portray these types of people. I mean, I don't think I've ever been asked to play anything that I've been morally conflicted to do. Uh, I, I, I don't know how I would feel if I had, I don't, I don't know, if I had to play, I don't know, it's usually guys that, that get to play sort of the more awful type characters. Well, no, I mean, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't want to get into it. Because guys are awful, morbid, I but, get it. No, but, you know, like, well. No, I understand. I mean, do, I think, well, there are, there are, there are some strong female villains in the, in the world of fiction or, or, or Right, and even nonfiction, I suppose. Well, no, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I guess predominantly there might be more men in those roles. Is that what you mean? Like as far as I the bad get, guys? Concerned? Well, yeah. Like I don't want to say the words and be morbid or anything. Well, no, I mean, I guess with Dexter that was kind of. I mean, playing a serial killer, but no, I mean that's. But again, like it's not. I'm I'm creating a. I would never kill anyone in real life, obviously. But give it time. But. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, but I'm, um, I'm portraying that type of a character, so it's not, that wasn't for me any type of challenge to, you know, where I had to think about it and, and worry that I was going to go against myself and my own morals playing that, you know? Yeah, I, for me, it's, it's less about the role and more about the piece. Uh, I, I think that... Um, it's funny, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who have, who have been hung up on certain characters, like, well, you know, but this character does this, so I don't want to play that character. I go, yeah, but was there a reason why they did that? Is there a, does it service the truth of whatever the film or the play or the television show is? Like, I, I've always contended, like, you know, I would play the nastiest, dirtiest character. In fact, I would actually really love to play, like, a really horrible person. <laughs> That sounds strange, but I mean that. I mean, it's like, you know, I've played a lot of characters that, that uh, have really good hearts, and I love playing those characters. I love playing Chuck, you know? Um, but you, I also don't want to get pigeonholed. I don't want to get typecast. I want to play something that's, like, very much different than that. Um, but I would want to play it where there, it, but to truth, so that there's a reality to it. I wouldn't want to glorify that, oh, yeah, what a horrible person. I want to aspire to be that person. And contrastly, I would not play a very good person in a piece that I thought was not good, that was not about truth, like, you know, like a priest in a porno. Like, that doesn't save you, you know what I mean? Like, you can be that great guy. <laughs> oh, but I'm the one, you know, I'm, it's like, okay, what, are, what is the piece about, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, I mean, and then, but, but then, you know, I, I, love, I love that there's shows, like, now especially, I feel like there's a lot of shows, um, uh, that are, there's such an ambiguity about them. Like Game of Thrones to me, one of the reasons why I think Game of Thrones is such a great show, House of Cards actually I think has a lot of ambiguity to it too, where you look at these characters that, like in the beginning when you first meet them, you're like, oh my god I hate that person, I hate them I would kill them if I were near them, and then you meet more, of, and you learn more about them, you go actually, I kind of see where they're coming from. I don't like their methods, I think they're actually still kind of maybe a bad person, but I see where they're kind of head or heart or psyche or journey and I think that you know ultimately I think that, you know there's a lot to be learned and like in grace like even when you meet people in the world that you might Im immediately go because we're so full of judgment I mean like I'll speak for myself like it's re it's really hard to not see somebody go oh I think I get you I get your thing you know what I mean but you don't get somebody's thing because there's a whole life behind that you don't know where they came from you know and I think that's one of the great things speaking to kind of what Yvonne was saying like you get to portray life, if you can, you know, to the best of your ability, as real as you can do it. And even playing a serial killer that has some stuff and some baggage and some things that brought her to where she was, you know. So, I don't know. I, I think the, 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 the more complex a character where you can kind of try and get that out, I don't know. I'm sure people look at me like, you're so 2D. I mean, honestly, like, I, I take a lot of my acting classes from cartoons, so it doesn't, it's, it's not like a surprise to me. Uh, but, but I think that it's a great challenge as an actor to play those more complex and ambiguous characters in shows that are showing multiple sides, you know, because there is a lot of gray. Were you going to say something? Yeah, no, I mean, you, no, you just reminded me of just because during the time of Dexter when people, I was being interviewed about Hannah McKay and, you know, people from an outsider's point of view, she is this, this and this. And then, but, but from my point of view, 
she was doing it. It was justified. Like every action that she did was completely justified because of her upbringing, because of the crappy sh situations that she had been in leading up to, you know, her poisoning the first guy that she poisoned in jail and, and whatever else that happened. And it was, you know, as an actor, you map out everything that happened to that character to, to, to then get to that point of the bad deed or whatever it is, but you, you justify it. And for so, and because I was in that character's head for so long, I thought, no, 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 she's not, she's not that bad, you know, even though she is, you know, but when you're in it, you're, you're really trying to put yourself in, in those shoes to, to create someone, uh, you know, likable as well, even though they're a bad person on television, often as an actor, the challenge is to create the, a bad person that is likable. I mean, look yeah. at what Michael C. Hall did with the character of Dexter. I mean, yeah. Everyone followed this serial killer, and that's not, I mean, that's crazy. And we all fell in love with that character. And, 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 and I think that's, that makes it incredibly compelling. Again, two, two examples. Again, Game of Thrones and House of Cards. You see, you, you, there are characters that you despise, but you also love them. You love watching them do what they do. Like Kevin Spacey is despicable on, uh, spoiler alert, he is despicable <laughs> on, on House of Cards, but he's also brilliant, and he's genius. And you see the way that he, he's weaving these plans, and you go, I got to hand it to you. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Sure, you killed those people, but honestly, that's really good. Uh, and that's that's compelling. That's compelling, you know. But again, but you also, if you do watch House of Cards, you don't ever walk away from it going, oh, "I want to be that guy." You go, "I don't know." That seems that that's there's a darkness on that, you know. So yeah, excellent question. Uh, who, who's next? E right there. Hey guys. Hi. Thanks for coming again. Um, you just made my Friday. I had to play Rogue from work, so hopefully my boss isn't streaming this. Did that? If so. <laughs> <laughs> did, that, did that mean when you touch people, you take their powers from work? Is yes, that what you're talking that's about? True. All right. That and not being at work. Um, my question, I guess, since Zach is here for you as well, what is your favorite um, Chuck and Sarah moment and favorite scene to film? I need another beverage. Uh, I don't know. I, there's so many. There's so many, honestly. Uh, there's so many. And half the episodes, I wouldn't even remember half the stuff we did, I know. honestly. I like, know. I've only seen most of those episodes once. Yeah. So. I mean, we lived them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then you only, <laughs> you only end up watching them once, yeah? I actually watched. Four or seven times. I didn't. I watched recently at the suggestion of my friend the third and second last Chuck episodes like four days ago. I just but not the finale. No, we didn't get to it. We were we were too tired, but we watched the the third last and the second. You last. almost got to it, but then just you forgot. Randomly, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Weird watching. Too it. late. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard, right? It's hard to pick. There's so many. I like those. I have a funny story about Zach, actually. It's not in. Yeah, great. No, there was this. I just thought of this, actually. There was one time <laughs> where we were in the Chuck bedroom and we, you were lying on the bed and we were doing. I think I know this story. <laughs> I've told this story. And we were so tired because we used to work really long hours on this show. And, and Zach's lying on the bed and I'm standing there and I have a line and, and they call action. And so he says a line and then I say my line, which requires a response. <laughs> and the next thing you know, he's asleep. <laughs> In the middle of the scene. In the middle. I literally felt And I thought he was joking. And I was like, Zach. Because. Are you, are you joking? And it's like. <laughs> no, I did not snore. Okay, he didn't She's snore. embellishing. I just did that for Not that I don't effect. snore. No, but, no, but what, what had happened was, uh, <laughs> so she says her line, or I, I, I say my line, you say your line. Yeah. And, which by the way, I can't believe I fell asleep in the period of saying dialogue. <laughs> like it wasn't like, we had cut, we were resetting, like we had actually started the scene. I had already started talking and I still fell asleep with it. But, um, but uh, what happened was, I think I, some, you know, like sometimes, sometimes you fall asleep. It's like when you fall nodding off on a plane or whatever, you know, where you're nodding off at a, wherever you might nod off. 
and you but you you kind of catch yourself like you know there's like a weird you're in that still you're not deep sleeping so you kind of know that you're falling asleep but you might be asleep does anyone know what i'm talking about yes anyway all right everybody does <laughs> so uh some of you are there now uh uh so <laughs> so i somehow subconsciously and i don't know if somebody had said i don't think it i don't think it, i think it was one of those things where i just knew that i was probably supposed to say or do something other than what i was doing which was being asleep and so i think i, I woke up and i said the line but i said it like 10 seconds later right yeah. and then and then you kind of laughed you were like wait are you joking and yeah, then that, you said, that's why i said that yeah yeah and then the and then the crew started laughing i was like i think i just fell asleep right now <laughs> That should be on the blooper reel, but it's not. I, uh, no, thank it thank, thank God. Um, <laughs> see, we, we saved it for a great anecdote. A great yeah. anecdote. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think we had so many, there were so many memories. There were so many memories of, like, really silliness and fun and, and, and hardship. I mean, you know, we, we, there were, like, great, I mean, I've said this so many times, but it was gnarly. It was a gnarly show to make, and, yeah. you know, we'd be... I mean, you, you had it rougher than I did because typically, you know, like girls in the business, like you guys have call times that are much earlier than us for hair, makeup, and all that jazz. I mean, this, clay paste, you know, it's like uh, five minutes and, you know, in yeah. and out of the chair. So your call times were crazy and we, we, we'd shoot super late. And, you know, we, I mean, the first season, we'd shoot like 18 hour days sometimes. Yeah. Like, you, you, don't, you know, you'd walk, we'd walk off the soundstage on Saturday morning at like eight in the morning and the sun's coming up. And, like, I mean, it was. It was intense. So there was, you know, and that takes a toll on you after a while. And you don't see your friends and you don't see your family. And, you know, it's, it's gnarly. But it all culminated in something that we walk away from and go, wow, what an incredible adventure yeah. that we had, you know? Definitely. And I think that, I think that when, you, when you see the end of the fifth season and you see the emotion that is kind of pent up in everyone that comes out in those scenes, I know for me, and I could feel from you and from Sarah and from Adam. Well, Adam. <laughs> no, Adam. When Adam. What? When he like cried a little bit on yeah. the set, remember? I Are you would never cry talk now? about that. <laughs> Not publicly. I'm kidding. We all did. Uh, so I, I, I cried every day for a month in the build up to that yeah. ending. It was, all, I mean, not you know awful in the sense that it was just emotional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, I got a text from Robbie Duncan McNeil. He says hi. He says hi to all you guys. I don't know if he goes. No, Robbie Duncan McNeil. He was our directing producer on Chuck. He sends his love. Robbie, if you're watching, we love you, buddy. We miss you. Hi. Um, yeah, I mean, but, you know, all that emotion was real. I remember those, I mean, those scenes kind of stand out the most to me, I guess, only because maybe they're the most, the most fresh and the most recent, but also because they were so intense, and I was looking at these people who are my family, who still are my family, <laughs> who come and, who literally come and take, you take your time. You didn't have any other press. She came just for you guys, just for this. I mean, come on. <laughs> Um, but you know, that's, and that's, that's so insane and saying goodbye to you guys, bawling my friggin' eyes out being like, oh. goodbye, Sarah, but I'm really saying goodbye, Yvonne, you know, that scene on the beach and I mean, it was awful. whatever, <laughs> you all saw it. <laughs> I'm assuming has actually, that's a very interesting question. Is there, is there anyone in here and there's no wrong answers? Is there any, seriously, is there anyone in here who's never actually seen Chuck before? <laughs> 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 My Broadway co-star, Krista Rodriguez, has never seen Chuck before. In your case, that is a wrong answer. So, uh -oh. uh, other than her, is there anybody else that's never seen Chuck? You've never seen Chuck. You, never, you guys have never seen Chuck before. You see, you've seen the end. Ah, oh, jeez. So, Netflix, yeah. Who, oh, that's another, that's another good question. Who, ha who never, uh, just by show of hands, who never actually watched it on air, but has watched it since it aired on, on television? Isn't that incredible? I run into people that, by the way, thank you. Thank you for taking a chance on it. Thank you for finding it in your Netflix, uh, Netflix, <laughs> beverage? Uh, in your Netflix and going, yeah, I'll, I'll check this out. It's, it, it, what's that? Oh yeah. Was there anyone here uh, at, uh, I wasn't even ballroom 20. I don't even know what ballroom or hall that was, but was anyone at our very, very first Chuck panel? 
At SS San Diego Comic Con. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that it was like five hands and then like five, woo! <laughs> so about 10 of you, thank you. You guys have been with us this entire journey. You guys are rock stars. Thank you so much. Thank you for continuing to believe in us and support us even beyond that show, even, even into Dexter and into 24 and into the things that I'm wanting to be a part of. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and to Nerd HQ. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we got time. What time is it? What time? What time is it? Oh, we got time for a couple more, I think. You got time? You got I got time. Right. Yes, you're right here. Uh, my question is, uh, is there any project that you have coming up that you're really looking forward to? <sighs> I, I mean, well, there's this project that, <laughs> that um, is, well, it's an indie movie. So with indie movies, you never quite know if it's actually going to happen or not. You know, um, it's just a financing thing. I mean, it's fully financed, but... You just never know. But I, we are hopefully shooting uh, the movie called Manhattan Nocturne at the end of the year, which is a movie that Adrian Brody will be starring in and Campbell Scott and myself. And it's based on a novel. So we're, we've been sort of working on that. Um, and, you know, it was, it was meant to go last year, but it didn't. So hopefully this year will be the year. It's definitely something that I know everyone's very passionate about. Uh, so that's something that I can kind of talk about. Um, she can't talk about being Captain Marvel. She can't talk about <laughs> Or Thor, for that matter. No. <laughs> can I be both at the same time? Okay. No. Right. No. no. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, right here. Hi. Um, so I'm a big fan of Jock and both of you. Just want to say that. Thanks. So my question is, how often have you talked to Zach about the potential Chuck movie? It only took an hour to come up. What's that? It only took an hour to come up. Yeah. Chuck, oh, I know. That's actually pretty impressive. Well yeah, done, guys. Yeah. I'm happy I was the one to ask. <laughs> uh, have, we, have, we, have we talked about it? No. Well, I, I, know. I, talk, I talked to you about it a long time ago. Yeah. And, and I, it, only to the extent of saying, hey, if I could get this thing off the ground, would you be a part of yeah, it? Yeah, would we be a part of it? And you said? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's right, I totally forgot. I'm getting a beverage. Uh, no, of course we would. Of course we would, right? Wouldn't everyone? I mean, I, everyone I've talked, yeah. Would yeah, I, ta I talked to everybody. I, I mean, look, it was all kind of, pre oh, you can have a seat, by the way. Um, <laughs> just because there's people behind you. Um, uh, I've talked to everybody kind of, you know, uh, in cursory, and you know, like, I don't know, just throwing out feelers of like, would you guys be down for something like this? And everybody seems to be game. It's just, it's, it's just difficult. I mean, I've said it. Before I'll, I'll say it again, I, I would love to. I would love to have. We had such a great family. We had such a great family of cast and crew uh, that we still will kind of you know bump into from time to time. A lot of them work on Heart of Dixie. You guys watch the show Heart of Dixie at all? Uh, a lot of our like camera and grip and electric guys all work over there. We visited them uh, two years ago. Last? last year. I don't know. We yeah. visited them at one point uh, and just you know catch up. And I see them on Facebook and all that stuff. <laughs> and they're excellent. They're just excellent people. And we all really enjoyed working together and I just always thought it would be really cool to just get the gang back together to do little installments you know and it's tough to do a series you can't a lot of people are like why don't you just bring the series back it's super hard to do to do a whole series to bring that back is super hard to do community is like what they're doing yeah you guys community fans what they're doing with Yahoo that's unprecedented that has never really happened before and and we'll see how that all plays out by the way if you guys love community go get people watching the show on Yahoo because there's a reason why it's not on network television anymore and it's going to Yahoo because it's, you know, numbers. It, it's got to be numbers. So at this point, like, you know, we're, we're years away from the series to do another series, but to do a movie, I'd love to. And she would really love to. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Only this time can I wear the chucks and you can wear the heels. If that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> what if we write that in? We're going to put it in the contract. Be, you guys, you were here. You were part of the brainstorming session. There's going to be a scene where Chuck has to wear heels. Done. <laughs> but it'll be fine because I'll flash on it. I'll know exactly what to do. I won't and, wobble at all. And a cat suit. And a <laughs> Deal. 
<laughs> you can do it. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more question, and then we gotta, we gotta wrap things up. One more, one more, right here, right in the front. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, I got to meet you last year, and I actually bowed down to you, so that actually happened. I don't know if you remember that. It was for I <laughs> Frankenstein. Wow. Um, anyway, uh, my question was about, it was awesome to see you on Louis, because it was just so different from the heavier, dramatic stuff that I feel like you get to do a lot. So I just wanted you to talk a little bit about how that came about, and how, what it was like working on Louis. Uh, that was a, a big fat surprise, actually. Uh, they called and invited me to be part of the episode, and I immediately said yes. Uh, and it, it was amazing because it's not his show is really run by him. You know, it's there's not a massive crew or anything, and he really he I mean he he writes them, directs them, he's in them. He often, I saw him taking the camera, you know, setting up the shots and moving stuff around that were that was going to be in the shot. I mean, he was really, it was, I feel like there was 10 people on set making that show. It was more than that, but it felt like 10 people. Um, and it was very sort of guerrilla style, like, you know, it, everything just sort of happened in the moment, almost like shooting, like we were being followed by cameras and the scenes were just playing out. Um, and yeah, it was kind of awkward at times, uh, based on that weird scene where we had to make out. Uh, but it was fun. He's he's he's, uh, he's very smart. Like he's he's funny, obviously, but he's a very smart, um, business-minded individual. Just from observing him on, on that set, you know, really running that show from all different angles, it was a great experience, though, and 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 really great to do something that it, that was less dramatic and just sort of fun and laughing and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh, we actually have. We do have time for maybe one more. We, we can get, uh, who's got them? Who's got a mic? Does anybody have a mic? Or you stop giving mics because I said that was the last question. That makes that makes total sense. Here. Yes, right back here. All right. Um, my question is to Yvonne. I asked it to Zach earlier, and it's like um, you started off. You moved to America. You did Chuck. So, what would you have told your young Yvonne coming to America with the first show ever, and like, kind of like from like now, you know? Get ready to work 18-hour days. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know. I mean, uh, gosh, I probably would have said a lot. Like, I mean, well, that including get ready to work 18-hour days. I had no idea that you know you it was allowed legally to work that many hours on a film set. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it all happened so fast back then. You know, it was very hard to digest on the move, especially working those hours. You know, you didn't have a lot of time to live life on the side, really. Like, Chuck sort of became our lives uh, for a long time. Gosh, I mean, yeah, whirlwind. I, I didn't, I don't know. I'd probably be here for another hour if I uh, would tell you everything that I would sit my younger self down to, to hear, you know. It's a lot, it's been a lot, but it's been great. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out today. <laughs> Let's hear it for Ivan Strahovski. Keep it going. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta run him out of here. We promise him a running man. You running man, right out of here. <laughs> Evan Chomsky, everybody. Keep it going. 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 Oh, we had two posters that needed signing, right? We had two posters. We got them. Um, oh, you already got them. She kind of has them. And Fantastic. We'll, yeah. Great. We're going to work that out. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, I hope you got, uh, is anybody going to any more panels this weekend? Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. You guys are really quick on the keys because those go fast. Uh, 